Do you want to know what is the interview process for landing a job in data science? Do you want to know how you can prepare for your data science interview? If you answered yes to both questions, then you want to watch this video to the end because in this video, I will be interviewing Jay Fang, who is the founder of Interview Query, and he is also known as Data Science Jay on his YouTube channel. So without further ado, we're starting right now. Hi, Jay. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah, great, great. So thank you for being on my channel. And uh, would you like to take a short moment to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Jay. I am a data scientist based out of San Francisco. Uh, I've been working in data science for the past five years in Silicon Valley. Um, and I uh, just recently started my own company called Interview Query, which is a uh, data science uh, prep um, website for interviewing data scientists. Uh, and so if you're looking for a new job, check it out. Um, but yeah, my background has been in engineering from college. Uh, and then I joined a few startups, uh, one of which got acquired um, after I, shortly after I joined. So that was a really interesting experience going from machine learning engineer at a startup to, uh, you know, uh, basically like data scientists at this huge um, kind of conglomerate org uh, at Monster. And then uh, after I left that job, I joined uh, this company called Nextdoor, uh, which is basically like a neighborhood social app uh, mm -hmm. where you could communicate with your neighbors um, and uh, worked on data science and analytics there as a uh, on the monetization team, basically helping out uh, real estate agents um, and uh, local services kind of division uh, make uh, more money through their leads. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just recently quit uh, six months ago to actually uh -huh. then start my own company, as I said before. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a very, uh, interesting journey so far. Uh, so yeah. So w would you like to tell us how did you landed your first job? I, I, I heard that you, you landed the job straight out of college. Yeah. So I got my first, uh, job in analytics actually uh, while I was still in college um, mm -hmm. like a few months before I graduated and I mm -hmm. definitely got it from doing uh, these like data science blog posts and effectively um, figuring out that uh, I didn't like electrical engineering anymore uh, I really mm -hmm. uh, thought it was like um, really boring to um, not to offend any electrical engineers but like it felt right. Uh, very much just uh, super repetitive and kind of part of the past. Mm -hmm. And I think data science was very hot and trendy. Um, and so I uh, did a couple of blog posts uh, where I analyzed data about um, different things in Seattle. Like one was uh, housing, because housing had gone really expensive over the past few years uh, back in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and it still really is uh, right now, even in Seattle. Uh, and then also uh, something on crime. Um, and the crime one actually got picked up by uh, the news when like the police chief of Seattle like retweeted it. Um, and so uh, once I actually got like virality, um, it was uh, really easy to actually get a lot of these offers from these companies because they saw like uh, me as like an interested data scientist, um, as like a new grad who's just kind of like hungry to like learn, hungry to work on like different kinds of projects. Uh, and so I got a lot of inbound from companies. Uh, and ended up uh, getting an offer from this uh, kind of like analytics-based company out of uh, Redwood City um, wow. in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and mm. so, yeah, I joined that company. Uh, it was kind of crazy because um, I'd say like mm. the first, you know, two months, um, there wasn't really much going on. Like there was like this huge culture of like Silicon Valley and like this like mm. super high intense, you know, CEO and COO that were very mm -hmm. uh, kind of like hippie back to the earth kind of people, but uh, <laughs> were really um, actually like cashed out, I think out of their position. Yeah. And so um, I was kind of panicking because as a new grad, you know, you always want to be learning. Uh, and so if you're not learning, then uh, you're not really doing well because you just, you don't know anything as a new grad. And so I switched jobs right after that uh, and joined a uh, jobber at a startup where I was like the first data scientist and worked on their recommendation algorithm. Wow. Okay. 
<laughs> so um, what, what tips or advice would you give to a fresh graduate? Yeah, um, for a fresh graduate, I would say that the best way to get your foot in the door is through um, being able to showcase your uh, eagerness for learning and for uh, effectively um, applying and uh, practicing data science. And so mm -hmm. uh, the easiest way to do that, I think, is through blog posts. Um, it seems like there's a lot of different uh, channels nowadays, though, like YouTube channels mm -hmm. are probably a great way uh, to just be able to like showcase your uh, data science knowledge in videos. Mm -hmm. um, and then there also is, uh, you know, just being active in the community within like LinkedIn um, and going to different meetups, virtual meetups now. Um, uh, but, but to basically uh, showcase like your desire to um, learn and uh, be able to contribute to a team, I think. Uh, I think one of the fundamental things is that like people um, try to apply using using the like the regular ways applying through uh, you know like uh, online or like uh, through LinkedIn or something and it doesn't work as well because uh, you kind of like want it like marketing you know like you're basically doing like cold sales if you're sending in applications mm -hmm. but you really want inbound right and you want that inbound interest mm -hmm. because you've showcased uh, yourself as like this product mm -hmm. of being like a great data scientist and uh, to do that you need personal projects, you need to like uh, make those personal projects uh, go, um, they don't have to go viral, but they have to at least get views. Um, and that's like the easiest way to get people interested in what you're doing uh, and what you are as a data scientist. Okay, awesome. Yeah, what, what kind of project ideas would you give uh, some potential advice for someone looking into making their own personal projects? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I found like uh, really interesting projects are ones where mm -hmm. you have a data set that no one else does, and mm -hmm. then you run some ana analysis on that, right? So uh, you're basically like showcasing data in a form uh, in which no one else understands um, exactly uh, or knows like what uh, your the information that you're about to provide. You're almost like a journalist, uh, so to speak, because you're. Um, giving them knowledge that they would never originally have, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, I would say that uh, in terms of doing a data science project that no one else has data on, uh, a really easy way mm -hmm. to do that is through scraping data, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're scraping data off of um, websites, um, make sure it's okay, number one, mm -hmm. uh, to begin with. But once you have that data, um, you can then transform it, visualize it, uh, run like a simple regression model and be able to showcase uh, your results and tell a story that no one else uh, has ever told before. And I think that oh, is uh, really helpful. For me, um, no one had ever taken like the police crime data set in Seattle and just done some mm -hmm. like really dumb visualizations with it before, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was like pretty amazing uh, because that was wow. just uh, really simple, I think. And it, it wasn't mm -hmm. anything advanced. And I even think like some people mm -hmm. commented on it and we're just like, this is so dumb, right? But like at the end of the day, when it gets like so many views and uh, right. you know, you're like uh, other people who are already in this industry know like how easy mm -hmm. it was. Um, they're at least seeing that you like have some interest in it and that uh, you're like putting some value out there for like the public or the rest mm -hmm. of the world. So yeah, I would definitely say um, doing projects uh, with data that no one else has is probably one of the mm -hmm most interesting things and most beneficial things you can actually contribute uh, that will get right. you noticed. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so let's move on to um, what kind of things can we expect from a data science interview process? Would you like to give us like a, a sneak preview, a glimpse of what is involved there? Yeah, I would say that um, for most data science interviews, uh, they vary a lot depending on uh, where you interview at. So if you interview at um, these like fang companies, big tech mm -hmm. companies, um, they'll generally be pretty straightforward and pretty mm -hmm. much uh, the same over time. So like uh, the person that interviews there like a month ago, uh, mm -hmm. and another person who interviews like today, uh, the mm -hmm. experience is gonna be very similar. Um, obviously mm -hmm. they'll probably change up the questions and stuff, but every single right. kind of question that they're asking is gonna be within the same uh, type, right? So they'll probably ask, mm -hmm. you know, they'll have a technical screen, uh, well, they'll ask, mm -hmm. you know, maybe Python, SQL, 
uh, maybe like a business case problem. And then you'll have an onsite interview where they'll go through with like five people and talk to you about, uh, you know, the different things. Uh, if it's Amazon leadership principles, behavioral interviews, stuff like that. Um, and so I think that generally, um, I would say that uh, this is like pretty much standardized at um, right. it gets at bigger companies, but when you're at startups or uh, smaller companies or companies that don't have like a big data science team, then generally mm -hmm. it can be pretty uh, varied and like you might get a take home challenge mm -hmm. in there where they're asking you to do a project. Um, they might ask you to like solve a problem that they don't even know how to solve at their company mm -hmm. um, and just try to get a feel for how you would think about things. Um, and it's mm -hmm mainly because they don't have enough data points to like really be able to say uh, or understand um, basically how the data science uh, kind of uh, hiring process actually works. Um, and so, yeah, I, you kind of expect it because the field is so new, um, but yeah, it's definitely right. kind of different um, across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I mean, it, it seems pretty uh, challenging. Um, would you provide some advice like how can one go in preparing themselves for such a interview yeah i would say that uh the best way to prepare yourself for uh these kinds of interviews is to mm -hmm. practice the fundamentals a lot um I, and that means um practicing uh basically like uh practice problems uh of which like python and sql uh for your technical like kind of skills and then for some of the like more business case studies, it's more about looking at different products and understanding how they work uh, and really getting into like why uh, the business functions well and then why like new features get released in these products, right? So if I'm on LinkedIn, you know, and I'm like just browsing around uh, preparing for my interview, uh, you know, the next week I wanna be, um, I want to make sure that I know how uh, and why every single like feature is in there. Um, just because, you know, if they come in and ask, ask you something like, how does, uh, you know, LinkedIn in mail work, right? Um, if you had never used LinkedIn, uh, you'd have no idea what in mail is. Uh, but, you know, as we know what in mail is, it's, you know, it's, it's their messaging service, right? It's like you can send messages to each other. And so just having that basic understanding of how these products work um, really helps you like, uh, think about it a little bit more and when you think about it a little bit more it like really helps your like problem solving like capacity when you're actually on the job and they ask you things about like metrics and um, right. how you'd build like a new machine learning model for uh, this feature and stuff uh, just because you're like in that um, you're in that headspace already you know um, mm -hmm. so I think that's generally like the best way to prepare all right awesome and uh, what, what kind of, what are the popular questions you would say for an interview in data science? Yeah, I'd say that um, we've done some analysis on this as well, uh, which has been pretty interesting. But I think what happens is we see most consistently um, SQL questions that come up, right? People, uh, they always want you to know SQL because uh, it's just like the basic bread and butter of like pulling data out of a database. Um, but it's really hard to get experience in it uh, when you don't actually, um, you know, are starting a job or if you're not actually mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, on the job and uh, have like a, access to a database already. Right. So I'd say mm -hmm. um, being able to learn SQL um, will help you as a intern will help you as mm -hmm. a data scientist um, because you definitely need it. And then also helps right. you in just like every other field. Um, so just pulling your own data. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones are all around, I think. Um, there's Python for like kind of more scripting, like text manipulation questions, string parsing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's product and business case questions that are more focused mm -hmm. around like how well you know uh, the product, um, how mm -hmm. well you can like think about things, how well you can um, try to solve problems before diving into data. Um, and then there's more like machine learning and modeling case studies. And so these are around mm -hmm. uh, like theoretically building like a recommendation engine or a search engine or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, let's build um, a classifier for this feature. And so these are more where you're talking mm -hmm. about like what kind of project you would build. Um, and then lastly, there's, uh, I think this is the least frequent, but they'll probably ask like, 
statistics or probability questions. These are generally not as common, I think, uh, but more asked at these bigger tech companies because they uh, have this like threshold level for what you should know for um, in terms of like just general academic, I think, studies. Um, but yeah, I mean, at its core, you know, like machine learning, um, data science is based off statistics and probability. And so they might ask you just right. a few questions about that so that you know, like fundamental things like Bayes theorem, like binomial mm -hmm. distributions, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> right, I think we, we've covered a lot so far. Yeah, we covered a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and one, one question that I, I get asked a lot on my channel is, how do Fang use data science in their company? Yeah, um, so I think these Fang companies, these big tech companies use data science uh, by essentially having their data scientists um, kind of spread out with them the whole, whole organization. Um, if you think about it, it's like, uh, these companies are humongous. They're like hundreds of thousands of people, right? And so they all mm -hmm. work products and so um, generally usually it's like a data scientist will be on a team with like um, you know three to five engineers uh, in terms of like the ratio like one product manager uh, and then you know maybe like marketing if it's uh, mm -hmm. they're combining product and marketing together uh, but generally yeah it goes like data scientists engineering product management and they kind of form like the core product team uh, for a specific mm -hmm. uh, product feature. And this can be something as small as like, um, you know, for Amazon, it'd be like an Echo or something, or like even like within that, it'd be like the Echo's like voice feature that solely does like the Amazon shopping website. It's like something very, very oh. small, right? For these uh, right. huge tech companies. Um, but uh, that kind of just kind of gradually goes up, mm -hmm. right? And so the whole Echo team at Amazon would probably have like 10 data scientists, and they're just mm -hmm. spread within different parts of um, the uh, the core uh, product itself. Uh, but it's probably more than that, actually, now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, these uh, the data scientists that get spread across, they're focused on basically uh, a couple core metrics for their team. Mm -hmm. uh, and so their goals are usually to like push up those metrics or mm -hmm. to accomplish their like team's goals. And uh, as data scientists, I think they're uh, a lot of the times uh, making the creating insights in terms of understanding how the uh, what they can do to push their products forward uh, to gain more users to basically increase usage of their features uh, and they tell like the engineers kind of what to build basically what to mm -hmm. track like what should you be putting um, into the code so that uh, we can get the data back so that the data scientists can mm -hmm. analyze it and then also collaborating with the product managers on in terms of uh, you know, understanding where like the product roadmap is going uh, and what mm -hmm. the data says. And so uh, it's a lot of cross-functional collaboration. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's the most interesting part. Um, the more machine learning engineering side, I think is mm -hmm. more focused uh, in terms of like more like a factory in terms of like your building models. Uh, mm -hmm. And like the data engineering side is also kind of more like you're in like an assembly line, you're like doing ETLs uh, mm -hmm. over and over again. So. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, not as familiar with those aspects, but I know that uh, right. engineering has its own general culture and mm -hmm. they also exist on like a team, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, have more specific laid out tasks, I think, within their um, sprints and everything. Mm -hmm. Right, awesome. And uh, in the beginning, you, you, you talked about your experience in both startup companies and uh, multinational companies. Yeah. Could you provide us like a comparison between a data science role in a startup versus a multinational company? Yeah, I would say uh, a data scientist at a startup does a lot of work um, around just owning like everything data related, right? So if um, there's data engineering that needs to be done, then the data scientist has to do it. Um, if there needs to be like models that need to be built, then the data scientist also needs to do it. Um, and so that gives you like a wide breadth of knowledge and like an ability to really understand and learn a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the only, the downside is that um, you may not end up doing a lot of traditional data science as you'd like, unless mm -hmm. uh, the role is specifically meant for that because mm -hmm. um, at its core, you know, engineering is always uh, a first priority. You like, you mm -hmm. always need the things to be built 
uh, correctly and like you need the data to be ingested for everything to work. And so um, uh, a lot of the times they say that, you know, a data scientist is basically like a data engineer 90% of the time. Uh, and that rings uh, true for like a lot of my experiences as well. Um, in terms of uh, at a bigger company, I'd say mm -hmm. that uh, data scientists can then kind of go in the opposite direction in which they're um, extremely focused on like one specialized thing um, and they have to know it really well. So mm -hmm. um, at like bigger companies, basically you just have this like table, uh, mm -hmm. you like a set of tables in the schema of within the product that you just know uh, down to a, like a T. Um, there's analytics that uh, you have to run for different stakeholders, but generally you're pretty much um, siloed into like one specific kind of product or feature uh, of like a bigger company, right? And I think uh, there's less room for you to kind of like jump into and do some machine learning or do some data engineering because the permissions are so much more uh, strict based on your role. Uh, but at the same time, I think you learn a lot within your specialization itself. And so you can get really good at like understanding your product uh, and understanding analytics or understanding like machine learning or uh, mm -hmm. understanding how to build models specifically for uh, mm -hmm. a singular case. Um, but uh, you don't get to move around as much unless you actually go mm -hmm. out and switch teams, uh, which a lot of companies will let, uh, I think, their um, data scientists do because uh, they don't want them mm -hmm. to you know, leave or burn out mm. from working on the same thing right. for like a few years. Mm. Okay, yeah, great insight. Yeah, so um, I, I think a lot of our viewers would like to know like what kind of languages uh, would, would, would be useful to use in data science roles, aside from SQL and Python. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, languages besides SQL and Python? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, those are the only two I really use. Um, <laughs> I use, um, uh, I would say that, um, Python has come really far, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, has libraries across the board that are like super useful. Um, mm -hmm. and I just find it to be like a great language just to do anything in and like explore data, uh, and even do some data visualization now with um, mm -hmm. Seaborn and stuff. So, right. yeah, I mean, I think my workflow has always been like using SQL to pull the data and then using mm -hmm. Python to analyze it uh, and explore mm -hmm. it. Um, but I think in the future, um, mm -hmm. I see like potentially more no code tools coming up too for data mm -hmm. scientists. Um, like Tableau seems like really popular nowadays for um, people that don't know data mm -hmm. science too well, but they can drag and drop things and visualize things right. and mm -hmm. uh, get like their analytics kind of out there in terms of what they want to do. Um, mm -hmm. But I think at its core, you know, you'll never be able to replace um, messing around with data and munging it mm -hmm. with Python. Um, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how about Julia? Is, is there any popularity there in data science companies that you have been Working I haven't heard of it. Yeah. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I have heard of Julia, but I haven't mm -hmm. heard of people using it ever. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to fall out of favor, but I, um, I'm not that much plugged into that community. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, haven't heard too much about it. I think everyone was gung ho about spark for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, but then realized that they just never needed to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you like, you can use spark, but right. it, it, the use case is very small. And if mm -hmm. you know Python, then you'll know how to learn how to use Spark. So um, mm -hmm. the people that put Spark on their resume, I think, um, is kind of useless unless they actually did it at a job, mm -hmm. uh, at a, like at right. a company. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're like a new grad and you put Spark on your resume, then that makes no sense. So okay. Please take it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think we covered quite a few topics and... Uh, would you like to give us a final remarks about your startup company? Yeah, um, I think I've talked a lot about interviewing, uh, but um, at its core, you know, we've built, I think, after interviewing for like the past, you know, five years sporadically throughout when I've changed jobs, I finally got fed up and decided to just create my own company that would help data scientists uh, interview. Uh, so basically, 
Um, it's uh, we have a free service and a paid service, but um, yeah, if you sign up for the free service, we'll send you emails of uh, practice problems uh, asked by uh, you know data science uh, uh, interviews at uh, these top tech companies at Bing and stuff. And essentially, we just want to emulate um, the process uh, so that you can practice uh, over time. And uh, we'll be releasing a lot of new features coming up, uh, but right now. Um, uh, it's pretty straightforward in which that you can log in, uh, check out the problems, practice a few, and then uh, if you want the solutions, uh, then you can upgrade. And uh, we go really in depth into each uh, solution that we provide, making sure mm -hmm. that um, if you have like zero data science knowledge, uh, we can start you out, uh, you know, on easy and uh, give you like really in depth way on how everything works within the SQL, Python, mm -hmm. um, product modeling, and everything like that. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah. Uh, stay tuned, but uh, yeah, go check it out. It's called uh, Interview Query, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and uh, my YouTube channel, I guess, as well, where we put on mock interviews, and that's called uh, Data Science J. <laughs> right. Yeah, and and you you also have an excellent Medium uh, profile as well. You 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 have written yeah. I think more than ten Medium articles, right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. I, uh, really enjoy writing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. just because I think it's, you know, a great way to encapsulate your thoughts. Uh, and, uh, I have generally have a lot of things to say about data science. Um, I am trying to, I think, put out more stuff that is, uh, definitely less cookie cutter and more mm -hmm. uh, thoughtful about data science mm -hmm. coming up. But, um, yeah, I definitely have a lot of like, company guides um, mm -hmm. and general interviewing guides. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue to post stuff on Medium uh, like basically once a week for until. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, I have a random question. Like uh, recently I've written an article in Medium in towards data science, like yeah. uh, how I would learn data science if I could kind of like talk to my 22 year old self. Yep. And let me ask you the same question. How would you, if you could turn back clock and let's say you could tell your, your five-year-old younger self, yeah. how would you learn data science knowing what uh, you know right now? That's a great question. I would say that um, I would definitely learn data science by, I think, doing a lot of the similar things uh, that I did before. For, but I think having a better fundamental knowledge of it from mm -hmm. class. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think one the one thing that I didn't do very well was I didn't align my um, college classes to be indicative of you know like uh, doing data science because I did a lot of the data science outside of class mm -hmm. uh, and then ended up uh, just foregoing a lot of my like uh, general academic studies because I mm -hmm. enjoy it. And so I think mm -hmm. next time what I'd like to do is be able to like really focus in on data science and academia because you have so many like um, then like uh, resources, you know, for you, like you can talk to your professor, um, right? right? <laughs> and who would be like, you know, uh, basically a super good resource. Um, you could talk to like your friends in those classes. That'd mm -hmm. be helpful that you could come up with projects with. Um, and I think uh, doing it solo, you know, there was a lot of things mm -hmm. that I learned from basically grinding it out from the bottom up. But mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it could have been shortcutted by just, um, you know, talking to a lot of those people in college and just mm -hmm. understanding like uh, some of the fundamentals about um, Python, pandas, or machine learning that I didn't know at the time. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely like. Uh, going like bringing it back to school and like kind of integrating mm -hmm. it more within that realm uh, is something that I probably would have done back then. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Jay, for uh, <laughs> being on our channel. Yeah. And so uh, I'll, I'll provide the link to your YouTube channel, your Medium profile, and also your uh, startup company interview yeah. query. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming here. To yeah. No. Thanks you so interview. much. Yeah. Data professor. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, Jay. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.